So we have 56.371 minus 6.456. So our decimal points are lined up, which means that all of our other place values are lined up as well. So with decimal column subtraction, it's best to put the decimal point in our answer straight away. And we need to make sure that this is lined up with our other decimal points. So now we can just subtract as we normally would, starting with the smallest place value. So we can't do 1 minus 6, so we exchange. So we have 1 fewer hundredth which means that we can have 10 more thousandths because one hundredth is the same as 10 thousandths. So now we have 11 thousandths minus 6 thousandths, so that's 5 thousandths. Now we have 6 hundredths minus 5 hundredths, so 1 hundredth. But now we can't do 3 tenths minus 4 tenths, so we need to exchange with the units. And because one unit is the same as 10 tenths, we can have one fewer unit and 10 more tenths, which means we have 13 tenths minus 4 tenths, so that's 9 tenths. And now we need to exchange again, so 15 minus 6 is 9, and then 4 minus nothing is 4. So our answer is 49.915. Now we have 20.008 minus 2.518. So let's remember the decimal point in our answer. Now 8 minus 8 is 0. But now we can't do 0 take away 1. And we can't exchange with the next place value column to the left. And even if we look to the units column, we still don't have anything that we can exchange with. So we need to go all the way along to the tenths, to the tens place. Now most teachers will want you to do this in a different way, but what I like to do is draw a rectangle like I have here, and then change the digits. So 200 zero, zero becomes 199, nine, nine. but we still have our decimal point between our units and tenths. So that means we can have 10 hundredths. So now 10 minus 1 is 9, 9 minus 5 is 4, 9 minus 2 is 7, and 1 minus nothing is 1. So our answer is 17.490. So because we have zero at the end of our number, we could just say our answer is 17.49.